in these next few chapters, I will be creating another wrench. Now, this wrench will be slightly different than uh, this one that you see here. Um, I know that I wanted to create a more or less uh, same tool, and it will be for the most part, but uh, you know there will be sl uh, some slight differences. Now, I will also be using a completely different approach uh, to modeling this thing. I might use, actually I probably will use, a few of the same tools that I used to model this wrench over here. But at the same time, I will be taking a completely different approach in actually concept or bringing this wrench uh, to fruition. So basically what I want to do is I want to create an image plane. And from that image plane, I will be using it as a reference to base off uh, the shape for this tool. So first of all, what I want to do is I want to create an image plane. So I thought that uh, it would be nice if I actually included a chapter uh, that goes into Photoshop and goes into the entire creation process of an image plane first, because I find that uh, you know some people might not know that. Um, I know that I've seen that question a few times, and uh, you know, I just thought I'd do that. So basically, all you have to do is you just uh, go into uh, Photoshop, or well, first of all, you search for a wrench picture, or you just take your uh, own photograph, and basically you end up with something like this. So you just load up an image. And the first thing you want to do is, in my case, I'm going to want to crop and pick the wrench that I want to model. So in my case, I'm just going to go ahead and just go into the crop tool. I'm going to go left click and select a section where, you know, that includes the tool that I want. And I'm just going to click the check mark button. And there we go. Now, this tool looks fairly straight on, but it's, uh, you know, it's quite actually quite off. If I look at these lines over here, you might notice that they are in fact not aligned. I mean, the bottom line meets uh, fairly close to the actual bottom left corner of the image, but on the right corner of the image, or on the right side of the image, you'll notice that this line is actually nowhere near the bottom. So I'm just going to have to straighten this image out. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and just go to uh, View. I'm going to go to New Guide. And you know what, I'm going to make it horizontal, and I'm going to make it 10 pixels just to start. So basically what this gives me is it gives me a new guideline that I can use for aligning uh, you know, my image uh, after the fact. Well, you'll see what I'll do. So basically, if you just go ahead and just choose this transform tool here, you can go over these guidelines, as you can see, until it turns into these two arrows and a line in between. Once it turns into this, you can left click and just drag it wherever you want. So I'm just going to leave it about here. And at the same time, I might want to make another one. So let's just make another one, another 10 pixels. And you know what, not vertical. I'm going to undo that, go to view again, new guide, horizontal, 10 PX. So now that that's done, I just want to make sure that I have a few lines that I can align to. All right, that's cool. So now what I'm going to do is I need to make sure that my layer, as you can see, this layer is the background and it's locked right here. I want What I want to do is I want to make sure that this layer is editable. So there's a few ways. I could either duplicate this layer or I could just double click on it. So I'm just going to double click and press OK. And you'll notice that this layer is now unlocked. And now that it's unlocked, I can easily go to edit free transform and now you'll notice that there's now a rectangle around this image with a few squares all you have to do is you just have to go into the outside of the image and just pick either one of the corners you know just outside of the corners until you have your arrows uh, you know basically until you have something like this where the arrows are slightly bent now what I can do is that you can just left click on here and just drag and try to straighten out this line right here. So for now, um, considering that this is right now being interpolated by Photoshop, what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to leave it as it is. I'm going to press OK. And I'm going to try to see if this is in fact the line. And you know what? Judging by this line right here, it's actually not that bad. So I am actually just going to leave it. And the reason why I don't want it to be 100%, I mean, well, I do. 
but I can't have it 100%, mostly because of the fact that there is, in fact, some lens distortion in this actual image. So this image will never be 100% straight. But for modeling purposes, this is more than good enough. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and just go to view, and I'm just going to clear the guides because I don't need them anymore. This image is more or less straight. And the next thing I have to do is I have to make sure that what I want to do is I want to create an alpha mask around this image because when I import this into Modo, I want to make sure that this wrench is the only part that's visible and I don't want to see the paper inside of Modo. So I have to make sure that the paper is actually going to be completely transparent. Not 100%, I mean, I don't really care about fixing the inside of here, but for the most part, I just want to make sure that the outside portion of this image is perfectly clear. So let's go ahead and just create a new layer. And this layer gets put on top, so let's just click and drag and force it to go down here. And I'm just going to go, go to Paint Bucket, make sure I paint black or white, uh, it doesn't matter but just some sort of background color until the entire image is filled. So now, of course, if I go to my layer zero, which contains the wrench, if I hide it, you'll notice that my entire image is in fact zero, or at least my background is entirely black. So I can now go ahead, just click layer zero, enable it, and now I have something like this. So the next thing for me to do is I'm going to have to make an alpha mask or a selection of the outside and then just mask it off. So let's go ahead and click the selection wand mask or this magic wand. Now there's a few things I could do. I could quick I could use the quick selection tool and here you're just going to have to play with it. But what you can do is you can do something like this where you can just click either along this image to the best of your ability like this, just click and hold and just drag. Now there's going to be problems around sections like this, as you can see. So this doesn't look very nice. But this is actually not too bad. Now, the reason I say it's not too bad is because I can easily fix something like this manually. So this is more or less done for me, and that's okay. I can fix it up, uh, you know, just in a few seconds. But again, this tool, this quick selection tool works just fine. Of course, if you don't want to use that, you could use the magic wand tool. So I'm just going to click outside of it and clear that. I'm going to make the tolerance 40 and I'm going to try my luck. So I'm just going to click somewhere here. And as you can see, we have a selection made and this selection is actually quite a bit nicer. So now that my selection is made, I have a few options, one of which is I can feather this selection just a slight bit or I can fix it up myself. Now I'm going to choose the first method, which is I'm going to go to select. I'm going to go to either refine edge or modify and choose one of these tools here. So let's try to refine this edge. And as you can see, once you go to refine edge, it's going to show you the exact, uh, you know, mask that you have. And of course you can try to smooth this mask, in which case it tries to you know, it smooths it out, but at the same time you lose some of the sharpness. You can try to feather it by blurring the mask. You could, of course, contract it or expand it. In my case, I actually want to contract it just a slight bit. I want to feather it a little bit and perhaps a slight smooth. And of course, you know, you could use the radius tools and whatnot. Again, you could use some of the contrast just to tighten it up a bit and of course at the bottom here you have different ways of displaying the same mask so I can choose this for example and it'll just show me the white and black, uh, black mask I can choose this to show me the part that's being left out and of course I could do stuff like that so I could easily just show it like this so for the most part right now this is more or less done I'm just going to go ahead and just click OK and my mask is set up, my selection is set up. So now what I can do is I can just easily click this button here to create uh, an alpha channel for this layer. So I'm just going to go ahead and click this button. And now you'll notice that this, 
the branch has actually disappeared. Well, the reason why it has disappeared is because it's just the way I've selected my mask initially. So what happened is I selected the paper and then I chose to keep that instead of the actual wrench, but this is okay. Now the reason why I say this is okay is because considering that right now I have my image and I have this mask that's linked to it right now. And of course you see a very slight white uh, rectangle around this and I can easily, as you can notice, click and select whatever layer I want to work on. So I just want to work on the mask. And I'm just going to go ahead and just go to select, or actually not select, but image, adjustments, and I'm going to go ahead and just invert. And now what you should see is my wrench and the black background. This is perfectly fine because again, the black background will actually not be displayed when I do my final, uh, when I import this back into Moto. So what's next? Well, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we uh, only see the wrench and no part, no parts of the paper. And of course, none of this uh, up here. So what I need to do is I need to just go into make sure that my mask is selected down here. And again, I have a few options, I can either clean it up in the viewport as it is right now. So I can just easily select my brush, make sure that I have a black brush here. And I can easily just paint out whatever I don't like. And of course, you'll see some changes happening over here. So I can just easily do something like that. And you'll notice once again, there was a slight update here. And just keep doing that until you are done. And of course, during this time, you might need to zoom in. So if you go over here, you'll notice the navigator. Just zoom in a few times until you are at about 200% and just go ahead and fix this stuff up. Now again, this result that you have here is not perfect because I can still see some of the paper. But you know what? For the purpose of modeling, this is actually still quite okay. Okay, so we have a wrench, uh, more or less, and um, we have an alpha channel. Now one thing we will need to do is I will need to make sure that I have this image that's being completely flat as in it has no layers and it has an alpha mask applied to it so that Moto can actually read uh, this alpha mask. So what I need to do is I need to first of all make sure that I select my layer mask and then once I select my layer mask if I well okay let me explain this basically every single layer can have its own mask so if I click on here to choose the background layer and then I go to channels you'll notice that there is no alpha. If I however go into layers and I choose this layer here, which contains the wrench picture. Then I go to channels, you'll notice that there is a layer zero mask. So what I want to do is I want to copy this layer mask. So I'm just going to go ahead and just make sure it's visible. I'm going to select it. I'm going to go to select all. And I'm going to go to edit, copy. So control C. And of course, with this layer mask selected, I can very easily now select this image or, you know, just deselect everything in the viewport. So I just, I just usually just select the rectangle, just click anywhere. It'll clear the selection or you can go to select, uh, deselect and that will work just fine. So with this done, I'm just going to go ahead and just go to control E or layer flatten image or merge down. So I want to merge this layer down with this one. So control E will give me an image like that. Now you'll notice that my mask has disappeared. This is okay because what I will be doing is I will now go into this layers channel. I will create a new layer, which will create an alpha one. And in this alpha, I will go ahead and just press control V to mask or to uh, paste the mask that I had copied earlier. So now with that done, I can go ahead and save this image and I can test it out in Moto. So I'm just going to go ahead and just go to file, save as, and of course in here, I'm just going to go ahead and just save it out to here. Uh, so, you know what, let's just name it uh, wrench, um, I don't know image plane. So 
image plane and I'm going to just go ahead and just choose Targa and Alpha Channels, that's fine. Now I'm not really sure 100% yet uh, if black is, well you'll see. So just go ahead and just choose 32-bit pixel, click OK and go back into Moto. So we are back into Moto now and the first thing we need to do is we need to create, a, we need to basically go to new item and of course in here we need to choose backdrop item. Now again in Moto 5 uh, you would have these two filter thingies here. You would just press the button over here and just choose the backdrop. So as you can see a new something has appeared here and if I go ahead and just hide one of the tools that's overlaying right now you'll notice that I have in fact a backdrop item and it's currently selected. So let's just go ahead and, ha and add an image to this image plane. So with the image uh, or the backdrop item selected what I can do is I can go to image I can select that and go to load image I will then go into G drive go into wrench image plane TGA go to open and as you can see my image is in fact imported right into Moto. Now one thing that I wanted to note earlier is that if I go ahead and just go to Photoshop one thing that I want to note is that whatever is white is solid whatever is black is perfectly transparent so that is uh, you know the important part that you need to make sure so let's go back into Moto. so now I'm just going to go ahead and just select the backdrop item and with the item selected I can do a few things one of which is I can choose the projection type so I can choose either front right back or whatever I'm going to go ahead and just choose top and now you'll notice that the image has in fact snapped to a different viewport and you know what I'm just going to go ahead and in my viewport I'm just going to go to top or of course you could just uh, you know use uh, the hotkeys um, so basically with the item selected I'm just going to go ahead and just choose scale so I'm just going to press R and I'm going to scale this until this portion of the wrench becomes about the same size as this now this wrench is overall longer, but that's, again, that's perfectly okay. So my wrench is here and it's pretty much ready for me to work on it. Now the one thing I might want to take care of in the image is just to get rid of this little ugliness there. So I'm just going to go back into Photoshop very quickly. I'm going to go ahead and just choose my brush. I'm going to go back into my alpha and I'm going to alpha that out. So let's choose RGB again. Let's save out that image. So save as. And once again, G drive. And you know what? Let's, let me just go ahead and just choose Targa. Save this image. Go to replace. That's fine. Go back into Moto. And Moto will now ask you to reload to change the image. I'm just going to click yes. Yep. And now, as you can see, that little dirt has, in fact, disappeared. So. With that done, uh, I think in the next chapter what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and just start modeling this tool here. I don't really think there's anything else that I really wanted to cover. I mean, you can basically flip your image. If you go ahead and just select your backdrop item, you have a few options. Um, but for the most part, you know, you want to keep aspect. Uh, if you want to keep the proportions of your image uh, always intact. You know, you have a few options here, obviously, with uh, scale. Here, you just go ahead and just load images. You have a few options here to change the contrast, brightness, and uh, transparency. Again, for the most part, I just leave it as it is. Uh, if you have a properly set up image, everything should be fine. So basically, um, that's how you go about creating image planes and putting them into Moto. Next chapter, we go ahead and actually model this piece.